All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning into this video. My name is Errol Francis II, and I will be presenting on our 2024 CHI paper. On the screen, you'll see the title of our paper, as well as myself and the co-authors. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So you're probably wondering, why should I watch this video? Why should I tune in? Well, there are three categories. If you fall into one of these categories, I think you might want to stay tuned. First is if you read news, and that's any type of news, right? Second is if you read news on a mobile device or a laptop or a computer, this presentation might be for you. And thirdly, if you ever read news and you find yourself questioning or wondering how true the news you are reading is or something just isn't sitting right with you as you read that news, this presentation is definitely for you. Now, I want to go on and say that if you do fall into one of these three categories, you're not alone, right? So let's look at just the news landscape in the past 20 years in the United States. First, we'll see that online news consumption has increased in the past 20 years, but we also see that misinformation has increased as well with the increased availability of news on online platforms. And with that, we also see that Americans' distrust in news is on the rise as well. So that leads us to two very important questions. One, how can we help combat this misinformation. With misinformation so prevalent, what can we do to be a part of the solution to help identify and call out misinformation? Secondly, how can we build or rebuild uh, the consumer's trust in news in the United States? Two excellent questions, and that's where we come in. We believe, if done correctly, Digital news provenance tools can be used to both combat misinformation and help the U.S. public slowly but surely rebuild trust in news media. But this isn't a small feat, right? This isn't something that's just going to happen overnight. It needs to be done correctly. Well, how do we do it? That's, that's the real clincher of the situation. How do we do it? Well, it starts with answering two very important questions. First, we think that digital news provenance tools can help solve this problem. But how exactly will these tools influence users' perceptions of credibility and trust in a news article? And then secondly, how can we design these tools so that they optimize usability? Because at the end of the day, we want something that helps increase trust in, in news, but it also has to be user-friendly and people need to enjoy using the tool. So it's a two-part question. Before we go on, I just want to take some time and define what we mean by news provenance tools. When we say news provenance tools, we're referring to digital applications that have been designed to provide indications of genuineness or legitimacy of online news through a variety of mechanisms. Those mechanisms can be something like fact checking or bias identification, provenance authentication, the list goes on. But as we use the term news provenance tools, I want you to keep that in mind because this is specifically the apparatus that we're talking about when we use that definition or we use that terminology. So let's talk about our paper. Let's let's talk about exactly what we did. So for us, we wanted to design a news provenance tool that can ultimately hoping affect people's trust and credibility or perceptions of trust and credibility in a news article. But then also we wanted to build something that's usable that people find they enjoy using and understand very simply how to use. So we looked at it from a two different lenses. So we built a two by two between subject study. 
the first thing that we wanted to look at was the location of provenance information. So location for us means it's either going to be internal to the publisher website. So it's right there embedded with the article and you can see that provenance information as you read the article or it's external to the publisher website. That means that if you want to see the information, you have to go to a totally different website or web page just so that you can see that provenance information. The second thing, the second element that we focused on was presentation. And presentation, we mean the style of the provenance information. So we have a traditional blockchain log that looks at ledgers and really just tells pass or success fail information. And then we have a visual blockchain log that highlights information, is clickable, it's more of a GUI interface where people can expound upon the findings or what's being spoken on in terms of communicated provenance information. That's probably a little bit difficult to understand without a visual, so I'm going to provide you one right now. So these are the four designs that we ultimately created. The first is the external blockchain tool. So it uses blockchain ledger type format, and it can only be accessed outside of the news article's original web page. Next, we have external visual tool. So this one uses more visual elements, but it still is external to the article's page, and you have to go to a whole new web page to access it. The third one is internal blockchain. So it's the same exact information across all three, but this one uses the blockchain ledger style of communication once again. But this time you can access the information directly from the web page itself that you're reading the article on. And finally, we have the internal visual tool. So everything is communicated exactly as the others, except it's on top of the article and you don't need to go anywhere to access that information. Things are clickable, expandable. You can learn more from exploring the page. So let's talk a little bit about what we did. What was our method? We collected, we collected information and launched the study based on prolific participants. So once we got those prolific participants together, we said, we're going to go and introduce you to an interface. Now, before we jump into the actual study, we want to make sure that you understand what it is that you're getting into. So we gave them a brief tutorial just so that they can learn how to use the interface. After they learn how to use the interface, we jumped right into the study. The first thing we told them is we're going to give you an article. We just want you to read the article and you're going to answer questions about the trust and the believability of the article. So this was the prompt that they were given after they finished the tutorial. And then this is the screen that they saw after they finished the tutorial. So just a regular on screen mobile style presentation of a news article. They were able to read it for a few minutes. And then after they read it, they went and answered questions about the credibility and their level of trust in the news article. After that, we gave them a new prompt and we said, hey, you know what? A brand new news provenance tool came out. We want you to try it out, test it, go back to that same news article, turn on the provenance tool, and now read the article again with the assistance of the provenance tool. So this time, when users went back to read the tool, the read the article, this is what they saw. The article was the same, except now they had access to provenance information that spoke about if the publisher was who they said they were, if there were other versions of the news story out there, if there were any type of edits that were made, they were had access to that history, or they could know whether or not edits had been made. And then finally, if there were any embedded images or embedded ink links, they made sure that they were coming from the source that it was coming from. Now, depending on the tool that they received, what they saw might have been different. But at the end of the day, this is what the flow of the study was. After they saw that, they answered questions again on just the usability 
of the tool. Well, this time they answer questions about trust, credibility in the article, but then they also answered questions about the usability of the tool. Because like we said at the beginning, we want to make sure we build something that people enjoy using, is easy to understand, and is intuitive. So after that, we said, you know what? Here's another news story. This one's completely different from the first one that you read. We want you to start from scratch and we want you to just take your time, read the story. And after this, you're going to answer questions about credibility and trust in the news article. So at this point, they're kind of getting used to the flow of the survey, but it's a brand new story. So again, this is the interface that they saw. They read the story, answered some questions on it, and then they moved on to the next section. But this time we had the same story that they read in the previous example, but it was overlaid with provenance information that could not be successfully verified. So this time around, you'll see it's the same story that they just read, but now there's a bunch of red markings indicating that the uh, provenance information could not be verified or it failed verification. So they read the article again with the provenance information provided, and they answered questions directly after that about credibility and trust in the article. And then again, with the questions about usability, just understanding their level of comfort using the tool, what they would like to be changed, things like that. So what did we learn? We talked about we were interested in presentation and location. And we had some very interesting findings based on that, but even more so, we had some very, very intriguing and thought-provoking findings when you look at presentation and location together. So starting with presentation, looking at the left, looking at the right, on the left, we have the, in, we have the visual tool, and then on the right, we have the blockchain tool. Well, you might find this hard to believe, or you might find it actually kind of easy to believe, but it turns out that the visual tool had a much, much, much more effective, uh, was much more effective in influencing participants' perceptions of the news article, especially when the authentication status failed. So, Imagine people are reading the news article. They see all these red indicators. They see all these red marks. You'll see the same red indications for blockchain versus, versus visual, but on blockchain, you can't investigate anymore. All it says is it failed to uh, meet the qualifications or it could not be successfully verified. The provenance status is unknown. Meanwhile, on the visual tool, you're able to click around, investigate, see what's going on. For us, we think that future research should trend away from what's being done now in terms of, you know, little icons that can't be expounded on or going with a straight blockchain approach where it's just telling you fail or not or success or fail. We really need to start focusing on tools that uh, improve users' perceptions of the provenance information that they're receiving. And that can be done just by providing additional insight with just clickable icons or just more visual, more visual approach to the information, the province information that they're interacting with. Next, location. Let me tell you something. Location does matter. We found that internal tools are much more effective than external tools at influencing participants' Uh, perceptions of believability and credibility of an article. So that kind of means when the information is given right in front of them, they can look at the article at the same time as they look at the information. They don't have to switch between screens. It's a much straightforward process where they can compare the article verbatim with the information that they're being given. So it just takes one step out of the process for them. They find it more enjoyable and easy to do. So we think that based on this, we need to focus on integrating provenance information directly on top of the article. Like any type of future work, any type of future research on this needs to focus on having an internal approach because we believe that we'll see the best results from that. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit tricky. 
when you look at provenance and location together, it's a mixed bag because at the end of the day, the internal visual tool was the most effective at influencing participants' perceptions of believability, accuracy, and trust. But then internal blockchain tool and external visual tools and had the biggest effect on change in perception of trust among users. But then when it comes to usability, it was the external visual tool that had the ultimate effect of being the most easy to understand, most fluent, and people just enjoying the experience overall. So for us, the key takeaway here is we really need to focus on what is most important. Is it about communicating the information? Is it about usability and having the, the user really enjoy their experience? Or is it about having that big change in perception where we know the tool is effective, that the information that we're providing is seeing uh, a good effect from users? And that's kind of where we have to figure out next steps. For us, we think that consumers, they love the idea of just having digital provenance tools. The idea excites them. It's something that they really buy into. Um, and I think that something moving forward, we have to continue to focus on. Next, visual cues. Man, visual cues are so important because they impact the perceptions that users have of the content that they read. So we have to continue to use visual cues, but then build on that. We build on that because provenance tools have such a huge benefit when veracity of the articles in question. So whenever the information can't be verified or its authentication provenance status is unknown, that's when provenance tools really shine and take center stage. Ultimately, we think that future adoption of a internal visual tool gets the best of both worlds. You have the information easily embedded and understandable for users. And while it takes a little bit more time to learn how to use the tool, in the end, we think it's gonna benefit users the most. So first, I can't end this presentation without acknowledging NSF for the support of their grant. I want to thank uh, the Clemson team, Columbia team, NYU team for their support in writing this paper, conducting this research, and just being overall a great team to work with. And I really appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys tuning in till the end of this video. I hope it was interesting. I hope that you have questions. And if you do, feel free to contact us. Our information's on the screen. Thank you.